Hello, good morning. Welcome anyone tuning in to watch this video. Today is August 25th of 2019 and once again I'm in Central Park. I want to first of all welcome everyone that has joined this guide. Uh, those of you in connection with my latest post on the timeline, the remembrance, our remembrance to Marcy Borders. A uh, woman who died because of uh, complications resulting from exposure uh, on September 11, 2001 in Lower Manhattan. Today it's another day. It's uh, a day where we remember the founding of the national parks system in the United States. I've already posted about this on my timeline. And to keep up and basically maintain the continuity on this timeline today, we find ourselves once again in Central Park. We are in the middle of a park. Central Park uh, is established before the, the national park system was created in the early 20th century. And in fact, we find ourselves in a space, in a landscape that happens to be the first section of the park that opened. Those of you who are familiar with Central Park, you know that Central Park is a very big space. And the area that uh, this camera, this lens is focusing on right now is the first section of the park that opened very early on in 1859. A couple of years later, the topic of today's video opened uh, the Belvedere Castle. Belvedere is an Italian word that means a beautiful view. And pretty much what we're doing now is walking. So to enjoy that incredibly beautiful, pleasing view on this beautiful day that we're having in the city today. Temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's uh, sunny, a few clouds here and there, but nothing too difficult. And we're making our way down this path here where we will be seeing uh, that incredible structure, a castle that opened in the late 1860s. It's a wonderful time of the year to visit this particular space because the castle was recently restored. And already as we approach, <clears throat> We begin to see the castle itself beautiful structure and the intention was that you just basically stumbled upon it after you strolled through this area behind me that we where we started a section called the ramble you encounter the, this beautiful castle before we get to the castle itself enter spaces and uh, reference what was done in the restoration let's take a look at some of the stuff that we have over here. So I basically approached from the southern section. Immediately soon after you approach, you have this uh, sign here that highlights what this space is all about. And as you notice, the structure itself is on top of a big boulder, on top of a big rock, a rock that is actually called Manhattan Mica Schist. Those are the big boulders that you see everywhere throughout the park. And uh, the literature reads, for more than a century, the Belvedere, Italian for beautiful view, has provided visitors with some of the most dramatic views within Central Park. Last restored by the Central Park Conservancy nearly 35 years ago, the Belvedere today is in need of a comprehensive restoration to address issues resulting from deterioration in the decades since the previous restoration effort, as well as work that was not done at that time. The restoration of the Belvedere will, ad will address the overall condition of its structures and terraces, modernize the systems that support its preservation and use, and restore lost aspects of the historic design. Mm, as we tour through the place, we'll see some of those uh, historic design elements that were brought back and the things that the Central Park Conservancy helped uh, fix. Before we get to the castle itself, let's take a look just behind this sign here to look at this interesting set of equipment this is actually weather equipment the u.s weather bureau has been operating at this center at this space since 1919 and for about half a century they had facilities over inside the castle the castle wasn't open to the public for it was being used by the u.s weather bureau and today uh well in the 1960s they left and uh, the equipment was basically automated so today there's no need for personnel but this is actually if you read that the temperature is at 70 degrees in fahrenheit if you're traveling and you're learning of how the weather is in new york this is the place where those measurements are taken so pretty much this is ground zero for weather information in new york city so that's an, an interesting aspect i know not too visually stimulating but uh, nevertheless it's something that is here and something that is very significant to this space 
I'm going to now make my way to the castle uh, along the way as people connect if you have any questions uh, just uh, let me know in the comment section and uh, I'll try to help you find answers as we approach the castle from the southern end we have this beautiful plaza beautiful plaza with a couple of steps uh, steps that are actually the material is bluestone when you get this uh, when you get to this open space and you enter into the castle's territory and what a beautiful view you already begin to experience from this immediate space you can pick up on the beautiful uh, wooden elements and also the masonry elements the tower elements that are off to the right hand side very soon we'll be going into this facility we'll be going in and taking the views from the different angles because again this is a space that explores the beautiful view that we have uh, in our surroundings as you enter again from the southern end you have access to this map here which shows the park itself in its entirety this is the northern end and here all the way down south we happen to find ourselves by where this red dot is this is by about 79th street the park itself goes from 59th street all the way up to 110th street and here we are on uh, 79th street So we begin to explore some of the uh, some of the highlights of this castle. We begin to encounter these wooden pavilions. It's a beautiful example of the diversity of architecture that you have within Central Park. This structure here wasn't originally built, and uh, later on, as we walk along, you'll be able to see uh, photos that reference how this looked for almost nearly a century. This was uh, proposed in the original design for the park and it was built but it became unstable and it was taken down. And uh, uh, later on in the 1970s it was rebuilt but without that tower element that you see uh, over there to the left hand side. This uh, tower element is part of the new restoration or was brought about in the new restoration. So pretty much if we look at drawings and illustrations what we have in front of us here today pretty much looks the way that it was originally intended to look in the original design and it's interesting how this wooden pavilion also echoes the larger structure that we have off to the right hand side it's a beautiful sunny day i am working in the park today i'm just gonna approach a little bit uh, in this direction here so that we can take in the view again this is a space where we take in the views that we have from the different perspectives from the different points this is looking north i'm gonna go down a couple of steps just so that we can get closer or basically on top of the stone on top of the boulder that the castle itself is situating we hear some interesting sounds that's because on the other side down there that's the delacorte theater that's where uh, Shakespeare in the park is presented almost every year and it's an interesting time because uh, the production that they have going on now is um, put up or organized by Disney and it's a production of Hercules based on the 1990s animated series. Very soon we'll move into the castle itself and we'll have a nicer uh, view of the theater itself. From this point, in addition of the theater right down there in the middle, the Delacour Theater, we also have the pond or turtle pond. One of the seven bodies of water in the park. And if we spend the camera a little, a little bit off to the right, you can see the castle on top of the rock. And spanning the camera up, we can see the top of the castle itself. Alright, let us now. Keep moving, go back up these steps, go back to this uh, wooden pavilion. Beautiful the way it looks from this angle here, the beautiful tower, which again was added in the latest restoration, this restoration that was completed just a couple of months ago. I'm now 
approaching the building, entering into the castle itself, there's a couple of plaques before you approach. So as I mentioned, late 1860s is when the castle opened, 1869. Over here, the plaque that we have in front of us, this is what it, this is what it references. As a lookout, it now has us in New York Meteorological Observatory, which was founded in 1868 by Dr. Daniel Draper, who was its director until his retirement in 1912, at which time the observatory came under the direction of the United States Weather Bureau. So a little bit on the history of the weather aspects of this uh, structure, and then over here, another reference this was installed after the 1982 restoration. And again, we see the castle itself directly on top of this rock, uh, Vista Rock. A couple of days ago, uh, we did a video tour of a place called the Hallett Nature Sanctuary. The Hallett itself was one big boulder, one big mass of Manhattan mica schist. Manhattan mica schist is this, the stone that you see here. These big boulders are everywhere in Central Park and the castle built on top of it. Over here it lists built in 1872, but already on the other side we saw another piece of information that reads that this opened in 1869. So 1869 it probably opened as a lookout and then in the 18, in 1872 is when construction was completed. Before we enter the building itself, I want to take a look at the new plaque that was installed. This was put up here in uh, 2009. And this was done because this is when the latest restoration was completed. Restoration of the Belvedere was made possible through the generous support of the Thompson Family Foundation. $12 million went into restoring this building. A couple of things were done. We've already seen the wooden element that was fixed, the, uh, the wooden pavilion there. And as we tour through the building itself, we'll see a couple of others. What's interesting about this plaque as well is that I think this illustration of the castle is uh, three-dimensionally printed. So comparing it to the other one down there, that kind of looks like a relief, and this is three-dimensionally printed. And it's interesting to note uh, the ways that this uh, renovation has adapted or reflects on the current cultural climate. We'll touch on that as we enter. Now, one of the new elements of the restoration are these glass doors. Now, originally, when you visited here in 1872, soon after it was completed, you didn't have doors. You didn't have windows either. This was a space that you were meant to basically stumble upon. And it was just a lookout, kind of like a structure that you find almost in the middle of nowhere. And again, the emphasis is the views. We're going to be focusing a lot on the different things that there are to see throughout Central Park because the views, they add something, they add value to this space. And as we've touched on previous videos, later on, uh, we'll touch on that a little bit further. You are greeted by a sign when you enter, reading the hours of operation of the castle now that is restored, fall, winter, and spring, close, Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, and New Year's. It's open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Summer hours are a little bit different. A fall, winter, spring, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you visit, this is definitely a must. This is inside the castle. As you see, there's very little on display. This is the first room and there are several rooms and we'll be moving about them and uh, checking in the views and checking the information that is available as well. So the doors are new elements, also the windows. Notice the beautiful frames that are created as you look through each particular window. From this particular vantage point we have a beautiful view of that wooden pavilion. And uh, looking down this next window here, we have a nice view of turtle pond if we get closer to the window itself. A nice view of turtle pond and the, the Delacour Theater. There are other windows where you can have, you have a very nice frame of that structure down there in the middle. This is the stage prop that is being used in that collection of Hercules. There are turtles swimming on Turtle Pond as well. 
and coming back to the building, we encounter a couple of signs. This highlights some of the restoration elements. The Conservancy took a comprehensive project to restore and waterproof the Belvedere structures and terraces, modernize its mechanical and utility system, and restore lost aspects of the historic design. Our work included restoring the wood pavilions on the main plaza and on their terraces, structurally highlighted, replacing the existing windows and doors with clear pane glass to evoke the Belvedere's historic open-air design. So originally this is how these windows look. They have paints over them, clear paints, and then later on this was done. And today this is what we have, this clear glass that evokes that original design. Stone pavers were also put in place in the terrace, and uh, they modernized the mechanical systems and new graded utility services. And this is interesting because what they did was workers dug 400 feet into the ground to construct the Belvedere's geothermal system. Now the castle is used to the temperature of the earth for its heating and cooling. This sustainable and environmentally beneficial system uses less carbon and it's energy efficient. That is very cool, a building that is aligning to this vision of an environmentally friendly world. No longer using energy from the grid, but using the energy that is on the surface below us. Using geothermal energy to provide heating in the winter and cooling in the summer. In fact, the lowest school today, this building, this interior, is climate control. control. And again, the views. Toronto, Belvedere, uh, sorry, the Delacorte Theater. And already we're beginning to see the great mom. So we're going to move a little bit further down. We're going to uh, going to take a look at these images that we have on this poster here. The city books and references, that which I mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, over where we saw the wooden pavilion. This is how this space looked uh, in 1904 because again, they had to take down the first pavilion that they put up because it became unstable. So, and also the view that you had on the space in front wasn't of the Great Lawn, it wasn't of Turtle Pond, but of a structure called the Croton Reservoir. Yes, a reservoir that was built in 1842 was situated more or less, or really where the Great Lawn is directly up ahead. Turtle Pond was created later, the Great Lawn was created in the, also later in the, 18, in the 1930s. So from this, the view of the reservoir, the castle, to this, a view of Turtle Pond and the lake. The Central Park has been here for 160 years. There were things here before the park. And uh, things have been done after the park was actually created. We're going to go up the steps, make our way over to the second level. There's a second room that you enter before you go up those steps. And if you look, again, you have opportunities to look out the windows, frame in those views. Very nice view of Turtle Pond. This is Vista Rock further down here, closer to us. And spanning back up, that is the very long. When uh, opportunity, um, allows we are going to go up the steps and take in the views from those upper levels. <coughs> There's only one way to go up and one way to come down, so you have to wait as groups of people come down and then you yourself get an opportunity to go up the steps. I'm gonna stand in line and very soon we'll get our opportunity to go up ourselves. There are mirrors 
that you can look at, and this will let you know if there's people coming down the steps. But as you see, it's a very narrow staircase. It brings you up to the second and to the third level. I'm going to go all the way up to the third floor. Let's take in the views from the highest levels, but already we begin to see some differences. Uh, double pane windows. And just to keep the motion going, we're going to enjoy this opportunity and go up all the way up to the third floor. Let's see. This is looking west. This is another view of that wooden pavilion recently restored in the 1970s. All you had was the pavilion itself, uh, really the lower section and uh, the bell tower. The tower itself wasn't there. The tower is part of the new design and was put up in the latest restoration. We have another wooden element. This is the highest point in the park. It's not the highest natural elevation, but it is the highest point and the views are just incredible. The space on there is a great long, very popular space for concerts. Uh, very soon the Global Citizen Festival will be happening in that field there and we'll have an attendance of over 50,000 people. In the fall, the view changes beautiful colors, and in the winter, even more as well. You even have more access to the things to see. For example, there's an obelisk hidden behind those trees on there, a structure called Cleopatra's Needle. This is looking east now. Let's now make our way down to the second level and again we have to use the one set of steps and as we make our way down it's probable that we have to wait a little bit in order for people to make their way Second level. 
here we have a double pane windows which again creates for very interesting frames if you think about it. On a day like today, it's a perfect day to come and experience these beautiful sights. The views that we saw down from the first level have now in essence been transformed by this uh, duality, by this duplicity of form that we see in front of us. Really the most impressive view keeps me from the terrace outside. This is a larger space than what we have over on the third floor and as you see people sitting on the corners and posing for photographs and also a nice view, a closer view of the wooden elements, the wooden pavilions that we have on the western side So the building, the smaller element, the smaller one and then the bigger one beautiful colors and beautiful detail of some of the wooden elements We see a visual of the space where we were, up on the third floor with that wooden element, with that wooden pavilion directly on top, framing and contrasting very very nicely with that uh, conical tower. It's not really conical, it's kind of like oval, but definitely rounded, it's not square, it's not rectangle. We have uh, different forms repeating and echoing throughout the structure, again creating for this dynamic of incredible visual stimulation. A lot of visual interest, different materials as well, different stones, for example the, uh, the tops, these elements, this type of stone is a stone called blue stone, and the building itself, as in itself, the main walls are made of Manhattan mica schist. Manhattan mica schist is that same uh, bedrock material that we have directly under the castle. This is the bedrock that appears all over Central Park and all over New York. In some creative elements, in, uh, in some creative respects, this use of this very same material, same material of which the, uh, the mound, the rock that this castle sits on top of, is uh, a romantic notion. It's almost as if the rock itself has transformed itself into this castle for us to enjoy this beautiful multiplicity of views that we enjoy from different angles and from different windows. Another view of the Tour of One and down in the distance down there that is the Belvedere, sorry, the Belvedere Castle. The three towers that you see is a reference to Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus is the dwelling place of the gods, of the Greek gods, and this display that we have here is in reference to the Hercules production that is happening over at the La Cour Theatre this season, this time of the year. A production that started on the 20 something of August and is running up until September 6. The production is usually held at 8 p.m. in the evening and tickets are distributed beginning at noon. Uh, tickets are free, you don't have to show up here early to stand in line so to potentially have access to those tickets they begin distributing at 2 p.m at 12 noon actually. There's also a lottery system you can enroll and if you win you get two tickets and you get to enjoy a production with very good actors, people like Denzel Washington, Meryl Streep and countless others have performed as Shakespeare in the Park. That's where it happens over the last piece down there. Another view of Vista Rock. There are plenty of turtles sunbathing focus on the, on the foreground right in the middle there, those dots that you sort of pick out, pick up are actually turtles that are sunbathing. A view of the Great Lawn and a view looking east. And from this angle also we have a nice view of these, uh, of the designs of these double pane windows with these columns. The Belvedere is, yes, a castle, it's also a folly, it's a structure sort of in the middle 
or in the middle of not I don't want to say nowhere but something that you find as a surprise after you stroll through the uh, through the ramble one of the three woodlands that we have in the park and again the ramble is the first uh, structure that opened or the first section of the park that opened that allowed for people to scroll and enjoy uh, what the park was supposed to be all about the park itself was completed by 1873 1872 is when this castle was officially completed and by 1873 countless numbers of people are using this space up until 1919 when the weather bureau took hold of it and used it for their operations they left in the 1960s in the 1960s the building fell into disrepair it was uh, riddled with graffiti everywhere uh, the structure was in, uh, it was very humid, uh, moisture, water seeping through it. The Central Park Conservancy, which was established in 1980, restored it and turned it into one of several visitor centers. And with the latest restoration, uh, work was done so to further control that, uh, that uh, moisture problem and the decay that the building had gone through. Over the last two decades, air conditioning was installed as well and those clear glass windows. That all comes about with this latest $12 million restoration. If you find yourself in New York, definitely check this spot out. Uh, connect to my guided visits on my meetup page and uh, come on a tour. Today is a special day, it's a beautiful day in New York. I'm leading a tour on a section of the park where a community of black Americans used to live, a community called Seneca Village. Uh, Seneca Village, unfortunately, was eliminated in order to make way for Central Park. New York is a place where, or that is really visual in character, and the things that you see here have the potential to transform you. In future videos and in the posts that I'm uh, uh, preparing for the Facebook timeline and my website, all are organized with the hopes that we can learn and pick up a little bit in the creative dynamics that make these spaces the incredible icons that they are and in the process become iconic ourselves a place that inspire that inspires so much is marked by incredible visual characters and i hear that there's some maybe sound testing happening over at the delacore theater that is for the hercules production all right